Dan, I got to be honest with you. Uh, your last video on YouTube had me scratching my head. It was... <laughs> <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little cryptic. Uh, you were you were not you were trying to be diplomatic or evasive or something uh but i'm gonna be honest you lost me well yeah i i kind of lost myself like i mentioned and, and i had a couple things going on with um i i wanted to bring up uh a giveaway that we were going to be doing and i don't want to didn't want to use the word giveaway because then the spam bots take over my comments and then i really? just had oh yeah i've been i don't know if you've noticed that no. but i if you if you if you use giveaway and you put it like in your description or you say the word you'll end up where uh people who leave comments on that video then will end up getting like replies from people from someone that's not you but they pretend to be you huh interesting and, yeah so i was avoiding that and then i just had this something just was on my mind that day that was just kind of like, I don't know, really bothering me, just had me thinking. And <laughs> just <laughs> when I start thinking bad things happen, watch out, man. <laughs> yeah. Look out. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, before we dive into it, let's first say, let's thank everyone for tuning in to the Woodhounds podcast. My name is Joe. I am a YouTube personality with Ohio Woodburner. And I'm sitting across from my good friend, Dan, who is the YouTube personality at Back 40 Firewood. And what I have noticed about you, Dan, and mind you, I mean, we've known each other for a while, but like I say, I don't mail you Christmas cards or anything like that. Um, I've, I've gotten to know you pretty well, though. But what I've gotten to notice about you, I can tell when you get agitated about something. And um, I've noticed that you've had this level of agitation. And I think I saw it in this video that you put out where you just kind of like talked in a secret code. <laughs> <laughs> and I could tell that there was something on your mind. And if I know you well enough now, I think um, you probably got lit up by someone's comment on one of your videos. Am I on to you? You are on to me. Yes. Yeah. It's it's been actually this <laughs> so far this year for some reason, I don't know what it is. 2024 is starting off with a lot of this. And I and I and that's where you know everyone will give you the advice, ignore the haters, ignore the comments, you know, anything like that. But I think a part of me I don't want to only hear the good. I want to know the bad and I want to then look at the bad because then that's how you make yourself better. Like if you're just okay. surrounded by people that are always telling you what you're doing is right and good, I don't think you can grow and evolve and change. That's fair. So I've just been reading a lot of these comments and there's been a, a general theme and I got a few emails and I got private messages about how I don't... I no longer am who I used to be. I don't pay enough attention to the audience in replying to comments. And then there was a comment on that video um, where, and I'll just, I'll just read part of it here. <laughs> and then we can get into it a little bit because this is the part that like kind of perplexes me and I'm not sure exactly what's going on. But yeah. this, this comment read, um, he doesn't think it's so much about me responding to comments. Everyone knows that con con content creators are busy. For me, I started watching your channel because you were this guy hauling wood behind a lawnmower and looking for places to find wood, doing home good stuff. It was easy to pull for you to grow and succeed. Now you are different, corporatized. You have more wood than you know what to do with. You have all these machines. It's totally different. It's your channel, though, so I will continue to watch occasionally, but you're not like you are in the past. And so my question and my perplexion from this is, if when <laughs> I was small, he was pulling for me to succeed and to grow, then over the last four years, at to what level should I have stopped growing and stopped succeeding? Yeah. I feel you, Dan. <laughs> 
you know, it's just, it's, it's kind of, I feel you, Dan. So the, do the doctor is in, okay. Dr. Ooh. Joe is here. So I am not a professional psychologist. Let's just throw that out there. But I am an amateur psychologist and my observations here, I think I could be, I think I can help you out with this. And I see this from, I'm an outsider looking in. I see, I see multiple ways to uh, view this situation. All right. All so right. let's think, yeah, let's think about the, the person who wrote that comment to you. Okay. I would think that number one, this person cares, otherwise they wouldn't have wrote that. So um, it's kind of like too, where you see married couples and maybe they're, or, or dating couples or any type, even friendship relationships, people change and they get different interests and they start growing apart. And in this case here, maybe that's what we're seeing where this person writing the comment has a, an interest in firewood and maybe there's this emotional connection, which we all know that there is with firewood. Uh, but it's more like small stuff, you know, your little lawn cart yeah. and splitting stuff with an ax. And that is what is appealing to them. Well, you have interests too, and you have grown and expanded and became a, um, I mean, I don't want to like be overly dramatic here, but you're a worldwide recognized person in the firewood community. Okay. So your what you have become is good for you and you have a large audience, but for this one person, it's just not as appealing as it used to be. He or she, you know, just yearns for the past. And we hear a lot of yeah. people like that today, you know, wishing we could go back to the eighties when the, when the music was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, um, maybe the feelings that you're having with this comment are similar to the feelings that the person who wrote it is yeah Does that makes yeah 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 and and i understand that and like i said i'm you know even when i did that video i didn't want it to come across as like me like whining or complaining or ranting it's more or less like i said i like to take these things and try to figure out where it's coming from and then possibly use that to you know improve yeah it's just uh -huh. that it's just weird that when people say stuff like I was rooting for you when you were small to get big and grow and succeed. But now that you've done that, I'm no longer rooting for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what's funny. Is, or, or I can understand that. Now I can understand that coming from you, you know, where people want you to succeed. They want you to grow. Uh, but then <laughs> when you, when you get to that point, maybe I, and I don't know what this person's feeling, maybe feelings of resentment or jealousy or, you know, or it could simply be just that emotional connection is lost. And that's yeah. where you start seeing a lot of people that are in marriages, that the exact same thing happens. Um, you know, maybe one person's career grows and, uh, that growth was highly dependent upon the stability of that relationship. But, you know, then once that person has expanded their career to such a level that they've alienated the person that helped get them there. Um, you know, I, I think that this relationship could be saved with counseling. OK, <laughs> I, I would have to um, check my <laughs> check my calendar with my other patients and uh, maybe I could bring you two back together. But I think I think that um, that's. That's probably inevitable, and it probably happens hundreds, thousands of times with other subscribers, but they just don't spend the time to tell you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and the other, I guess, flip side of, like, my whole thought process that day was to kind of also, you know, I'm sure there's other people out there in similar situations where they maybe have a YouTube channel, they start succeeding and they're going through the same thing. And, and it's like, I don't think the advice is always ignore it and move on. I think you do have to sometimes look at it and then, you know, just take a, take a moment and kind of try to figure out why is this person saying that? Because if yeah. you just block them and you just move on and you ignore all the so called haters, like, I don't think that's good either. <laughs> I think, I don't think to... this person's a hater though. No. Th right. And so, that was kind of my whole, like I said, I was out in the wood yard and I'm like, I got this stuff on my mind and 
I am not always the type of person to just move on. I do like to address things and, yeah. <laughs> but it was hard to address <laughs> it with, you know, it's hard to address things and not kind of beat around the bush sometimes. <laughs> so that's where I may have lost you. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to work. You're going to have to work on that skill. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I didn't know. I was like, what the heck's he talking about? Burger King or something? I don't know. <laughs> Dr. Pepper? What? No, what? Yeah. Uh, now that's coming from me. I'm the practical one here from Ohio. People from Ohio are very practical. Ah. Yeah. I, I struggle. My big struggle, though, not being honest, but I, I have, I tend to revert to being polite, you know? And coupled with my self-esteem, which uh, I got pretty high self-esteem, and that's where I don't get upset when people say bad things about me because I always say because they're normally true. <laughs> I can accept that. <laughs> uh, but I think, though, that's what you're feeling in this. I think that you and this person are experiencing the same emotions. Now, specific to you, though, Dan, I have said this before, and this was even before I, you started this YouTube presence before I did. And I had always looked at you and your channel as addressing that emotional connection that we all have with firewood. You know, you go back into the times of your youth and harvesting wood with your, with your parents. You said, you know, the whole, the term wood hound came from your mom. Yeah. And I always felt that your channel was right at the heart of that. And then you look at other channels like, um, you know, Chris uh, with In the Woodyard. His is about the the daily grind of running a firewood business. Just he's always busy. He's constantly going. Like Joe at uh, Joe's Premium Firewood, you know. There's all of these different um, channels, and they all seem to revolve around different aspects of the job. Yeah. And so now here you, uh, it, it was only a matter of time though, because of your growth, your presence in the industry, that your phone starts ringing from Easton made from Yappa that, you know, they want to put those machines on your channel and you would be a fool not to say yes. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it's not only, and I don't know, it's just, it's, it's something that as you do grow and as you start having su success from social media, like that was, that was my main focus. So having different machines to showcase and having different machines to use, I might not be producing a hundred cords of firewood a year, but that doesn't mean that I can't show and utilize some of these machines. You know, it's, it's just opportunity, yeah. opportunity knocking. Yeah, and that should be a non-issue, but I do know that there are people out there that have an issue with that, and that's unfortunate because I would think that if you were a phony and if you were bragging about, you know, you're this big firewood business and and you're this and you're that when really you're Dan at back 40, you know, that would be different. But you have always been upfront about that. Even when you got the um, the 37 D from Easton made, you, you had come right out and you had said what you feel your role is in the firewood community on YouTube, that you are in a position to show these kind of machines that you may or may not have been otherwise able to see. And right. you're able to put them on your channel. And yes, that's not the appropriate machine for what you do in your backyard, but you are still able to show how the thing works. And if a person needs it for their own needs, they can draw their own inferences make their own conclusions. Correct. And with, yeah, a roadside stand uh, and being a, you know, I come all right out and say it, the big word, I am a hobbyist. I mean, that's all it is. <laughs> I've never claimed that I'm selling X number of cords a year. I never even figure out and calculate or I hardly ever say how many cords. I don't even know how many cords I sell. But yeah. you know, I've, I've never made those claims. So, yeah, it's it's kind of I am who I am. And the opportunity uh -huh. to use these things was there. And and I'll take it one step farther, Dan. You are who you are. You come right out and say that. But at the same time, you never once denounce any other channel out there, you know, because they're different than you 
or there's something about that channel that you don't like. Yeah. You know, you mind your own business, you do your own thing. And uh, I think you do a great job. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. And that's, but, and, but, and the other part about me being me is I did touch on this in that video, like going through the years I did with professional wrestling, that was always the, the separation of, you know, the audience and the talent, like the arena and the locker room. So that's why I kind of didn't really know if I should talk about stuff that's going on behind, you know, the scenes with the comments and the emails and the messages. And it's, so it's one of those things where I try to balance that out. And that some, sometimes it just ends up where you throw out a video and you're like, what the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like the last one that you just yes, put up. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> In fact, that might have been my exact quote that I used after I got done watching it. I actually did have a couple of comments that were like, what did I just watch? So, yeah. <laughs> but but now, so flipping this around, do you, do you ever get any advice, any things like, you know, emails or messages saying, hey, what you're doing is not what I approve of, or I don't know, you know, on those themes of critique i do not get comments of this theme and i think there's a reason for it though dan because my channel shows a day in the life of a firewood delivery service and i started when i when i started on youtube i was small so i think the <laughs> the hopeful expectation is my business grows and i am just showing this evolution so I haven't really gotten the comments that you have with the uh, people losing that connection that they have with me uh, because I get the sense that the people, my subscribers are coming along for the ride and they're enjoying uh, and, you know, experiencing the, the good and the bad and the ugly along the way, along with me. So I think I, the short answer is no, but I think that there's a, an expectation or there's a, an explanation for that. Yeah. That makes, does that make yeah. sense? And do, and do you <laughs> think it's, do you think it's the, um, the factor of you actually have a firewood business that when the business grows, you deliver more firewood to more customers. Whereas my growth is only based around social media um you know that could be uh there is we have talked about this in the past where there seems to be for some people there there is and they are offended by how a person makes money um i think that they they I think they believe making wages, W-2 wages, is something to be made by the sweat of your brow. And then when they find that a person is making money by posting videos, that they see that as something different. You know, yeah. I, I think you see the same thing with professional athletes. People are just infuriated when they find out how much a, a player makes, you know, that uh, is good at a jump shot or good at throwing the football um, because, you know, they, it's entertainment and they f see that as different than a person that, um, you know, cuts down trees for a living or works, you know, runs a cash register. So uh, I think there's an element of that, uh, but is that necessarily, I don't know, justified because for instance, the professional athlete, how come no one ever says, you know, they never say, wow, how much do you think the owner of the Boston Celtics is making? <laughs> you know, they always, they only obsess on the athletes who are making money because if the owner of the Celtics can pay a guard that much money, it makes you wonder how much money he's making from that guard's labor. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. You know? Yeah. So, so people look at that type of wage earning as different. And I don't know if that's justified, but that's just the way it is. It's just, yeah, just that's yeah. just the way it is. Yep. So, and here we are in uh, YouTube and mind you <laughs> at a much 
a minuscule scale of what a professional athlete makes, but there is still that same element of where some people just don't, I don't know. I mean, people are like, uh, I mean, you get comments on, on, on videos where people are denouncing you because you're making money on YouTube. And I, I just don't understand that either because I mean, uh, we're a capitalistic society. <laughs> we're providing value in some way and shouldn't a person, uh, be compensated for their labor. And I would argue, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, they should. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. But you know, so here I am, I make money selling firewood and, um, not all of the machines on my channel, I guess they all have a social media element to them because I know that a lot of machines have been sold because of what has appeared on my channel. But some of these machines were purchased, you know, for instance, one that's a very big red machine <laughs> on my channel was purchased by me. Uh, that wasn't, that's not a freebie. And I still get comments, you know, about people, they, it's almost like they are saying that I am not credible because I am running this machine on my channel and I probably otherwise wouldn't have been able to afford it. And um, I think that is what, if I had a, where I'm being misunderstood, it's where people don't understand my business model and they think that firewood is still, you're getting $150 for a quart of firewood. Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because because I've I've also had that surface as well as you know I don't I shouldn't be running I shouldn't have the machine I have because the little amount of firewood I sell doesn't justify having that type of machine. So people will look at it and say if you're if you're portraying the image of having you know a firewood processor, you need to sell a lot more firewood than you do because otherwise you're not going to be able to afford it and you're going to go out of business. So, yeah. <laughs> and that's what I would say, but you have never pretended to be otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. That's... You have not. <laughs> you have been straight up about that. I think that's, that's the biggest, uh, I guess, misconception that people get maybe when watching Yeah, videos on YouTube. I don't know. I don't know. But it would be like if you back in your professional wrestling days and, you know, you always are running into the same wrestlers at every event. But then one of those wrestlers got seen by Vince McMahon and gets pulled up to the major leagues, you know, to the big time. Yep. And then all of the people that he wrestled with all those years now hate him, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> yeah. he, he grew and he grew his career to the major leagues. And now all you guys that are on the regional route are all jealous and you all hate him. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe we're talking about the same set of emotions here. Maybe I don't it know. could be. It could be. I don't know. I, I just always, it's, it's, and again, this is maybe this is a, we did that episode a couple of weeks ago about kind of the, the money, making money with social media. So it's kind of like another little uh, insight into what it's like to run YouTube channels, I guess, with this little topic today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it can, it can make you. It can make you lose your mind and <laughs> talk about stuff that no one has any idea about. <laughs> yeah, so I I had heard a public figure once. I can't remember who it was. Uh, they said that human beings are not cartoon characters, and what he meant was, you know, when you're in the public eye, uh, people see you as a two dimensional person. And they're quick to paint you as a particular way and give you personality traits that they want to give you, which may not reflect reality. Or, you know, that's what's causing them to want to tear you down or throw rocks at you. Uh, when really, you know, you're just a normal guy from Wisconsin who's got a mortgage, you know, yep. and a, and a full-time <laughs> job and a truck that occasionally runs. You know, you got the same problems that everyone else does. And you just happen to have a YouTube channel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just, <laughs> and again, I, I want to, you know, emphasize the fact that all of this is not stemming from like me complaining and whining and, 
you know, throwing a hissy fit about someone leaving a negative comment. I just, I think it's good to sometimes address those things and use them and look into why, what's the source? What, why is this happening? Why are people feeling this way? Yeah. Uh huh. I don't know. I think, uh, I think it goes back to what I, uh, when I first started speaking to this is you both have emotional investment and, you know, when you look at the world, relationships come and go, people grow together, people grow apart. But I think if you're an adult, um, you know, you can both handle it like adults, but um, ultimately maybe come to a, an understanding that's best for both of you. Some people, you know, I, I'm just going to use the marriage analogy here. Some people can go through a divorce and they can still be best friends about it. Some people go through a divorce and they hate each other, you know, for the rest <laughs> of their lives. Um, so I think it ultimately comes down to the two of you and, um, you know, just coming to a mutual agreement because I don't think this person is telling you that you better go small again, or I'm never going to you know talk to you again. They're not saying that they're just saying that they are, they don't right. connect yep. with you as much as they used to. Yes. So uh -huh. what you're saying I, here, Dr. Joe, yeah, is you're saying it's possible someone out there no longer likes me or loves me. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if I can handle that. <laughs> I must be <Yeah>. loved. <laughs> no. Uh -uh. What I am saying is, is that people's feelings change. Yes. And that, and that is normal and that is okay. Would, would you rather be feared or loved? Oh, that's some deep stuff there. Well, let me think here. Uh, I think I would rather be loved. I think that gets back to self-esteem. I think people that want to be feared have low self-esteem. And uh, that's important to them to uh, make themselves feel valuable. See, I want people to fear how much they love me. <laughs> <laughs> That is actually a, a quote from Michael Scott on The Office. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, uh, yeah. So yeah. anyway, just another, uh, yeah, it, I was, I knew you were probably going to ask me about this because like I mentioned, uh, people were kind of perplexed by that video, but yeah, yeah, I just, um, I am a very practical person. And when I see those kind of videos, I stub my mental toe. <laughs> and I, I, I was going to leave you a snarky comment, but you know, sometimes people don't know if I was being honest or not, but <laughs> I was going to uh, say something like, wow, Dan, this was the most clear and concise video I think I've ever seen from you. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I want to reply to it anyway, because I've gotten too big for you. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't understand me anyways, because I'm no. just so small. Yeah. All right. Well, it's it's been fun laying here on your couch, Doctor Joe. I okay. Think well, uh, see the receptionist on the way out, and she needs to get a copy of your insurance card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then I got some. Left, left I got some free samples of uh, of Doctor Pepium uh, <laughs> pills for you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing a pill can't fix here. That's right. But no, thanks yeah. for uh, thanks for hearing me out, and thanks for you know bringing that up again because I I did I do think it's it's worth I guess talking about. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Maybe people will say, "God, we had to watch that <laughs> video, and now we had to listen to this nonsense." <laughs> yeah, we should put a disclaimer on your video to watch to listen to the podcast first. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my. All right. Well, Dan, I enjoyed um this discussion. I I have. And I wish you peace and that you are able to uh, uh move on and be able to sleep well at night. Don't fret over over things like this. Yeah, no. It it's it's past me and like I said, it was just something on my mind and now that I've, you know, talked about it and listen to you. And I think now, you know, once again, everything is back in balance. I have harmony in my life. Okay. Uh, well, and I am now a, um, a, <laughs> <laughs> I am now a hobbyist psychologist. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> All right. All well, right. Thanks everyone. Yeah. Let's, let's wrap this up. <laughs> let's yeah. end this. Time's up. 
time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so thanks everyone for tuning in to the Woodhounds podcast. You can find us on all your major podcasting platforms and every Wednesday, 5 a.m. new episode. That's right. And thank you for helping make the Woodhounds the largest firewood podcast in the world. Woo. And and with that, I would like to say stay safe and be cool and be sure to visit your hobbyist psychiatrist and have a great day. <laughs>